Welcome everybody here to Siegel Talks at the Martini Siegel Theater Center, the Graduate Center, CUNY. We are in Midtown Manhattan at, and uh, it is uh, another day of the war. I think it's day 25 of the invasion, the illegal invasion um, of uh, Russia into Ukraine. And, um, and today, um, Manhattan. we have uh, the, with us uh, uh, two uh, artists uh, from Berlin, um, Julia Strauss, who will join us later. We had a slight confusion about the summertime. It is actually 5 p.m. in Berlin now. We invited her to come on at 6 p.m., though, and um, this is our, um, our confusion. But with us today, um, we have the, uh, a great curator and thinker and writer, Thomas Oberander, from, uh, formerly from the Berlin Festspiele, now uh, working uh, in uh, big productions uh, of museum pieces uh, in, around Europe. Um, Thomas, thank you so much uh, for joining in. How are you and where are you? Thank you. I'm back in Berlin. I was the last day in uh, Copenhagen and uh, I went by train. And with me, hundreds of refugees from Ukraine moving from Berlin to Copenhagen. Of course, there are a lot remaining in Berlin. I think uh, thousands, uh, and uh, it will be every day more and more. Uh, so I'm, I'm back now, but my thoughts are, of course, with these people and uh, with my uh, observations over there. So when you were on the train uh, from Copenhagen back to Berlin, it was full of red view Jews. It was, it was it like like war times actually? People on the move and um, yeah, tell actually, us a little bit. What do you see on the streets on Berlin and on your travels? Yeah, I mean, uh, I see of course like everywhere in Europe and probably also in New York, a lot of signs of solidarity with the people. Um, I was impressed by the Dutch and uh, also by the Danish people. They welcomed in the train um, the refugees with food. And uh, of course, everywhere they can use the trains and uh, they are welcomed on the train station uh, for free. And uh, there's a lot of support. Uh, I think many people try to do what they can. And... Uh, um, I feel touched from uh, the overcrowded train, simply. Uh, I think uh, we are in a very privileged situation here, of course. Uh, if you see the mothers with the children and if you see the tiny luggage they have for completely starting a new life. Uh, but I see really also uh, great gestures of uh, solidarity. Yeah, it is a, a, a quite a, a, a shocking um, development. How are art institutions, how are theaters reacting in Berlin? Yes, there are um, huge public events. For example, this weekend uh, on the Brandenburger Tor, uh, the wife of uh, Vladimir Klitschko, the mayor of mm -hmm. uh, Kiev, uh, did uh, sing the uh, Ukrainian uh, songs uh, as a gesture of solidarity and also thank you for the support. Many German artists supported this. There was a huge reading and um, solidarity um, action a week before. There are everywhere in Germany demonstrations. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's a part of the um, public life right now. Also all the newspapers are, um, giving a lot of space for experts, uh, for interviews, uh, and long articles. It's, I, I think it's the same in New York, of course, uh, but uh, I would say uh, for me personally, one artist comes back into my mind, it's Ilya Krzyzanowski, the director of the huge uh, DAO project. He gave a very touching and intelligent interview 10 days ago in the Süddeutsche Zeitung, in which he describes uh, that um, this terrible war, how it's connected with the Soviet history, with the, um, let's say the connection also to fascism. Uh, uh, there was never a kind of um, 
evaluating their own history like the Germans has to do after World War II. Mm -hmm. In Russia, there is a continu continuity of uh, elites. Uh, it's right now the KGB guy who is running the country, ruling the country in a way that is very old fashioned, brutal, and the system of fear. Mm -hmm. And for Krzyzanowski, uh, it was the work he did with this uh, amazing project uh, that started, I think, in 2007 in Kharkiv, in Ukraine. They uh, duplicated uh, a former scientific institute uh, in Moscow uh, as a kind of copy, as a film set copy in uh, Kharkiv. And uh, over two and a half years, they lived about 400 people and started to reenact the history of the Soviet Union and Stalinism basically in this kind of secret society uh, inside of this institute. And uh, they filmed it. They filmed 700 hours of uh, material of relations between people who are not actors, who are scientists, artists, technicians, workers, all these people uh, made a time travel back in 1938 and lived together in the fictional time until 1968. And they made this uh, enormous time travel under mm -hmm. conditions of living on an island. They did eat what uh, uh, people eat in this time. They had the same kind of haircut, uh, the same kind of clothing, the same cut, the kind of uh, debates. And uh, so I would say it's, it's the artwork of, the, of this time uh, that Ilya Krzyzanowski created uh, because it's a kind of analysis of uh, Stalinism and uh, it's a kind of, um, let's say, psychoanalysis of uh, the Soviet society and uh, the following disasters until right now. So for Krzyzanowski, I think uh, what Putin does is a mixture of Hitler and Stalin's system. Yeah. And uh, it's, uh, it's very impressive to see these films and I hope that it will be presented on a large scale now all over the world. Yeah. Uh, Ilya's ready for that, I think. <laughs> No, it was an imp impressive project. You tried also to present it in Berlin. It was also in Paris. It did not fully work out, but he really did ask about science and theater and community and the, the vision for a future. We have uh, Julia Strauss with us uh, here. Uh, Julia, can you hear us? Yes, yes, I yes, can. And, and, and I'm happy to hear you. Yeah, and Julia, Hello. I, 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 um, Hello. I, I would like to apologize profoundly. We switched to summer hours. I know I told you 6 p.m., um, uh, uh, Berlin time, but it still was 5, uh, 5 p.m. Thomas um, jumped in with both of you, have collaborated together. If, if okay, maybe Thomas uh, stays, um, stays with us and we can hear from him. It's a, a great work, also is connected to your work. The, um, I still have it here, the uh, Down to Earth uh, project, which we think uh, was truly um, uh, part of the future um, of institutions, of art, of engaged socially engaged practice and uh, we would like to 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 talk about this um today and thomas was just talking a bit about the refugees on the trains and uh, and uh, art projects that started in the ukraine and also that russia perhaps over the centuries has always been um, um an authoritarian force uh, dictatorships you know that that you know was about expanding empires uh, instead of what someone said who really, if you really rule a country, is whose songs do you sing? Whose books do you read? Whose artist exhibitions do you go? That's the real power. It's actually not in one sense, you know, with a military might. And, um, and we are so sorry to witness this apocalyptic catastrophe. Um, uh, so um, I'll have one more question shortly for Thomas. Thomas, uh, and I'm the same to you also then to Julia. You wrote about also in the Down to Earth book about the Betrieb system, the operating system of institutions, and institutions are also very much in the Julia's work. Um, what does not only Corona, but what does this war means to the operating system of institutions? What is the change? 
we will see what has already changed and um, what does that new situation mean, Thomas? I think uh, it depends on the place where you are if you give the answer. Uh, I think for a country like the Ukraine, the, the main task is the survival of institutions. Uh, it's the survival of infrastructures, uh, knowledge, archives, heritage. Um, so institutions have a fundamental um, task in saving memory, saving articulation of what's going on uh, in the society, giving shelter um, and giving space uh, for independent thoughts. And I think uh, we have to open up our uh, understanding of what institutions are. That's why it's so wonderful that uh, Julia is with us, uh, because uh, traditionally we think institutions uh, are made by walls and bricks and uh, uh, big budgets. Uh, but we learned that institutions are basically home places for communities. And uh, there are various ways of giving shelter to communities, giving voice to communities. And uh, I think we have to understand that right now there, for example, also in Belarus, uh, we have the problem, how can institutions, independent, liberal institutions survive um, this dictatorship uh, systems? And uh, I think we, we are witnessing um, the growing of proxy institutions, institutions that are half digital, virtual, and in another country, they have a home base that is really grounded in a city or in a place on earth. Um, and we, we see that our fantasy starts to grow, how institutions can be understood in future beside that um, guaranteed forms by a state. So mm -hmm. I think Julia is a much more better person yeah. to describe this alternative yeah. uh, modes yeah. of institutions. Yeah, we just had a talk at the Goethe Institute here in New York with Florian Malzacher, Tanya Bruguera, and Claire Bishop. And it was all about institutions, how to change them, what is the future, maybe should get in and out. But what happens if the institutions are bombed, like uh, what happened in Mariupol with, the, with the Russia, you know, where... Um, so it's a completely new questions. But Julia, now welcome again here on Siegel Talk. Uh, thank you, Thomas. And I hope you can stay with us. Please, please uh, uh, don't go. But Julia, let me tell you a little bit about her. She's a very significant European artist, um, someone who moves uh, between uh, uh, Germany, Berlin, Greece, Athens, but also uh, from native, her native Russia. She is an artist. She's an activist. I would also say an educator and a multimedia sculptor who also very early on in, since the 2000s created work for the, in the digital uh, realm. She was born in the Soviet Union as Mari. Do I say that right? Mari? Yes. Mari. And I'm it, very proud that yeah. this name, the name of us, our tribe, is now reaching the audiosphere of New York. Yeah, it is one of Europe's last indigenous cultures with a shamanic tradition in a theater family. Uh, she came, uh, uh, she was born into, but she lives in Athens in Berlin, as I said, and her sculptures, paintings, performances, drawings, video, 3D work have been seen in solo and group exhibitions. Uh, for example, at the Pergamon Museum, the Kropius Bau with the Festspiele, Tate Modern, the, the uh, Tirana Biennale uh, in Amsterdam, Athens Biennale, Kiev, Moscow Biennale, uh, the ZKM, the uh, Center for Art and Media and Culture, and also at the Documenta. The Documenta is coming back also this year, though. This is um, someone who, whose work uh, people look to and look for questions, better questions to have, and perhaps also for, for some answers for new questions. And um, uh, she was also the organizer of the Autonomy Academy in, uh, in, uh, in Athens. We will talk about it. Um, so, um, uh, Julia, how, how do you experience at the moment this, uh, this time, not only of Corona, but of war? Well, these are Lyra-less times, according to Plato. The times of war are times without the Lyra. 
but uh, we disagree with Plato and we constitute a completely different system of governance in which art partakes Art plays an important role in this war, and art perhaps is um, only capable of telling the truth, saying, just saying it, not hesitating. We all feel something in the current situation is wrong. And I think art plays an important role in the society again. And this is why I have brought a reconstruction of an ancient Greek lyra to mourn, to mourn the victims of the theater in Mariupol. Because if you look at it, it looks like an ancient Greek theater. And if you look at the situation in Ukraine, it is the artists who were doing the Maidan revolution. Not only, but significant part of this revolution is Julian Beck and Judith Malina in the sense that they have turned theater into life, in the sense that they have been spending two months on the barricades in the middle of winter on Maidan Square, in the sense that people were shot from the windows of the Ukraina hotel and nobody talks about them, what we, the entire world, the planetary community are listening to is, oh, in the Maidan Square, there were so many Nazis. And we don't talk about this being the idealistic project, this being the impulse of Europe, this small, small country, peripheral Europe, being actually that Europe, that we have never become until now. And this was Maidan. And this is the role of art in the 21st century. Art is politics, and if it's necessary, art is military. If they would accept me now in the military defense army in Ukraine, I would go there immediately. But I think I would just rather disturb the processes, and that's mm -hmm. why I'm not there yet. But this can change anytime. I'm serious about it because mm -hmm. the governments are not able to understand that they are Putin, that dictatorship is in New York because the capitalism is complicit with this dictatorship. Tell me, the Russian saying says, tell me who are your friends and I will tell you who you are. Bloody oil, stinky gas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, uh, I think you are absolutely right. I think uh, Ukraine, which is right, right now, right between the Eastern Bloc, as you see, the Western Bloc, or as we now would say, the, between the idea of democracy and the authoritarian regimes, it has perhaps moved um, from these uh, uh, from these uh, 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 complex of thinking. Um, you did in 2000, uh, the virtual kingdom of beauty, I think. Uh, is it right now, would you say, is it kind of a virtual kingdom of horror, what we are experiencing? W and tell us a bit, what do you think, you know, um, what can artists do? What should artists do? That's what we are asking us here in New York. Artists already have built a different political world, a different political reality. And artists have a very clear vision of um, our societies in the future. Um, they have, especially the so-called activist artists, they have stopped um, relying on existing infrastructures. And you can see now this is a clear example. Empire is not sustainable. And this is the bridge to our mutual experiences of the down to earth exhibition, which has transformed an institution for some period in time. What a pity Thomas Oberender has switched off his video exactly mm -hmm. at this moment, uh, because this is exactly the point. The future doesn't bear the empire. The empire is not a sustainable form of governance. And what art can do is what it's already doing. 
For example, in Kiev, there is the biennial, but biennial is more like a work of art. It is organized as um, filling the gap of the institutional support of public space, of agonistic space for solving conflicts, for discussions, and as the space for really developing some developing some new definition of what is art and also what is politics. So this uh, institution existed as a self-organized um, initiative. And even now, this is what is what is doing today. And it's more poignant. The last one was called, um, the last one was actually called 68 now. But the one I have participated in with the Academia program was called the School of Kiev, which is a reference to the School of Athens. And this was uh, exemplary for creating a society of the future uh, by forging the networks, which we are now relying on. What do you think, who are working, who is working on um, uh, support, the support of the infrastructure in Kiev? Why can Kiev exist? Kiev can exist because of the soldiers who protect the city. And also, you know, cities can exist for quite a long time. In the current situation, it is encircled, but it cannot be actually, it, it cannot be fully taken. And so, so a city can exist for a long time, but it depends. It depends on solidarity. So what has been built during the last uh, 10 years in terms of solidarity between different movements, artistic movements, within Europe and beyond, it is actually what now supports uh, the existence of the infrastructure in Kiev. And it is the role of the artists to also run these infrastructures. My dearest friend, Nastya Teor, she has been organizing a lot of um, initiatives. And one of most moving and touching ones was that they have been receiving donations and they have been cooking the soup and they have been bringing this soup to the uh, metro station because the workers of the metro station didn't have anything to eat, Frank. Can mm -hmm. you imagine this is happening in the 21st century? The workers didn't have anything to eat, but the metro is serving as a shelter nowadays. The streets yeah. are not yeah. safe. This is what the artists are doing. The artists are documenting. Nikita Kadan, for example, is doing the documentaries of the most scary, destructive parts of Kiev. And their life has turned into war already at least seven years ago. This war was already going on since a long time. Uh, Evgenia Belarusiec is writing a diary. Wonderful mm -hmm. works. I have actually sent the links to all these um, different persons and their websites and their PayPal accounts. And your colleagues have received this list via email and I hope that it will be posted on the documentation. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is the role of art. Um, it's so not so uh, what you say to repeat is what you say. First, art created solidarity. First artists went out to demonstrate, but then they created networks. Networks, they were not part of institutions, ne not started by institutions, but actually these networks, these connections are the ones sustaining um, a city, you know, that is under siege and the role of an artist is to do that. And uh, I think it's discussed in your book also the idea of Heidegger who came up to the idea of Hüten, shepherding, of care. Um, Claire Bishop spoke also about this, that perhaps the socially engaged art um, has been taken over. People, uh, Black Lives Matter didn't need artists anymore, but what artists perhaps have to do now, the most important is to give care, take care and to shepherd and to create um, such spaces. Um, wh what are your friends experiencing? Do you get, how do you stay in contact? Do you get Facebook, uh, Instagram, TikTok? What do you, how do you, how do you know about this reality? We stay in touch purely uh, through the revolutionary telepathic channel. We are synchronized <laughs> since the revolution of 2011 and 2012. And yeah. we don't need all this uh, Zuckerberg empire anymore. So we just telepathic need... channel, tell a bit. What do you mean? I'm joking. Of course, we are staying in touch with yeah. all available electronic means of communication. Yeah. 
Yeah. And uh, I really feel as if I would be spending a lot of time with Nastya right now. Nastya is in Kiev and she has moved together with others into one apartment so that all different artists can stay together. So they have founded a community within this militarized situation with, under bombs. They are starting communities and, uh, uh, and she lives and works in the corridor of her apartment. And in the corridor, it is most safe space because it doesn't have windows. And so from there, she has created wonderful um, documents, drawings, and also writing. And I have also um, sent your colleagues the, the link to this beautiful work. And uh, this is, yes, this is how it is possible to create a completely alternative reality to the, to, to the war reality. And they have trees inside the apartment and quite big plants and they are staying calm and they're sure that their soldiers will protect them. Mm -hmm. It is it, it is quite an incredible situation. So much of your project, both of yours, but also your life's work, uh, do they ever understand why right, to transform uh, um, uh, institutions, to find new ways of educating and sharing knowledge? to uh, also think about Gaia, the earth, the idea of that we need to take care of. It is now being, you know, it's, it's a rape. You know, the soldiers, you know, coming in with tanks, buildings get bombed, you know, there is it's the most brutal assault and it's against everything, I would say, what uh, down to earth um, stand for. Mm -hmm. I'm, I just want to read a bit of the manifesto. It, it did say on the book, what connects art and a new ecological politic? What change? is just around the corner for our cultural institutions and what change is needed. How will Gaia, that idea of, of Mother Earth, will be represented on the stages? So it's no longer an, an anthropocentic uh, 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 representation, just humans having conflicts between each other. Um, how can you do art without using up resources? What can we learn from indigenous cultures? And what does animism uh, uh, mean? The, the kind of the idea of, a, uh, of indigenous thinking, which now is becoming so much more uh, also in a way mainstream, the consciousness of animals, of plants. Remini Protocol did just in our film festival that's going on now, the play was an octopus who's on stage and they're trying to, 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 to connect and see the dance of the octopus. Does the octopus connect to an audience? And they say he, he or she does. So, um, and the Anthropocene, is it coming to an end? All these questions, but right now there is a World War II, a World War I, an assault with tanks and bombs. How do you put all of this together? Do you both think this is, a, it is a, just a vision or what will, what will prevail? How, how can you stand up against this? You know, I am very happy to have been born in um, the autonomous, back then autonomous republic, Soviet Socialist Republic of Marie El. Uh, we have succeeded all this um, environmental destruction throughout the past 2000 years. So for us, Putin is just another reincarnation of what um, Western thinkers were uh, carefully comparing with some Stalinist methods, and nowadays they start understanding that this actually wasn't a metaphor. Um, mm -hmm. But back to the point, um, yes, to be born in this huge empire as the smallest indigenous minority, it's quite uh, a mission, something that happens to you quite automat automatically, because within an ancestral theater tradition, you, of course, inherit a certain agency. And uh, nowadays, this agency um, sharpens and uh, clarifies more and more because what is indigenous Europe and um, in relation to, of course, resources. And so there is a, a big elephant in the room and um, decolonization of Russia, or I call it regionalization or regionalization, regionalization mm -hmm. of Russia is not only my political vision, but simply 
an inevitable reality, inevitable reality. This is why this empire has to hold us all so artificially in chains. But Ukraine can be seen as first and large scale attempt of the inner decolonization of what has been left from this certain economic zone of the former Soviet Union. Those economic ties have never stopped, you know, the situation. So um, now it is the last struggle, it is the last fight. And I am in the privileged position to say that um, this movement of the indigenous Europe will cut this empire like a piece of cake into a diversity and multiplicity of different cultures which live in equilibrium with their environment and which protect natural resources and accept them as persons. And for us, it's nothing new, but in Bolivia, in Ecuador, in New Zealand, and in Australia, natural, natural um, environments, natural living spaces have been already step-by-step step accepted as persons and been um, protected as human rights are protected. Of course, there is a counter dynamics of Bolsonaro and shifting of those laws of protection of indigenous communities and so on. But um, yeah, no, it's a, it is it is a big assault, and perhaps as you say, for centuries it has been going on. You both also were connected to your project. I think the Academia. Platonos uh, guard, you know, a shopping mall that was basically planned right next to uh, uh, you know the garden. There. The, gardens the gardens are planned. Well, Atlantic Thomas Bridge. also once sent me the talk he gave, which I thought was deeply moving. I felt uh, about the resistance that came also from East Berlin, the ones people who went on the streets, who uh, were the revolution and who have been overlooked, and all of a sudden, you know, were pushed aside once the uh, capitalism came in. Thomas, what, what, what do you see? Um, uh, we have that war, we have, you know, the, the, the shopping malls arriving, that what you called for was your colleague, your army of friends and artists for that um, uh, uh, down to earth. Um, do you think we experienced in the last, the ends of the empires or uh, are we entering a dark, uh, the, uh, another dark age? Um. It's an open question. I think both options are uh, open and given. Uh, I would love to be so optimistic like uh, Julia is, and there are good reasons for empowering all these uh, forces and movements that liberate uh, societies and, and individuals. In the same time, I think it might be interesting if I have a look on situation in Ukraine, my impression is that there is clearly a uh, um, birth of a nation situation right now there. It's, uh, it's clearly the orientation of this uh, nation to the West, much more than before. In the same time, they feel that uh, economic interests are so strong, they can't rely on uh, the brotherhood of the West. And this is very interesting, I think. It's painful, many people die, but in a very good way, they are in the middle, in a very open field. So solution is not to become a part of the NATO to get the same goods and the same structures like the West. They started to liberate uh, their own expectations on future from the West and from the East. And uh, I think uh, that's the thrilling moment of uh, this whole development. Will there be something uh, new? Because always in this situation, the new comes around the corner uh, from a very unexpected uh, direction. And I think what's going on in Ukraine is, on one hand, we see very old power games, but we see in the same time 
uh, birth of a nation as a nation of culture, as a nation of language, as a nation of tradition, memory, solidarity. And uh, I don't feel so comfortable with this national thing. Uh, but in the same time, I feel uh, that in these circumstances as a path of liberation for the people in the Ukraine, hopefully. And uh, they are forced now after, hopefully, this terrible war will end to develop also a very open view on their own history. So what's going on in Mariupol with this um, Azov Brigade, with this kind of right-wing uh, nationalists who are strong forces, they help, they're helpful now on the side of the, or as a part of the Ukrainian army, but uh, don't be too naive about this. So there is a lot of things beside the Russian aggression the separatist movements and so on, that splits the Ukraine uh, in their own center. And uh, this will come back. This will be raising up the main questions of what kind of country do we want to be or to become? And I think uh, Zelensky is a very interesting uh, political figure. I wished uh, to quote uh, um, Ilya Krishanovsky that uh, the Russians will have such a liberal um, person as a president in future that is able to navigate through such transformative processes. But in the same time, I think uh, we should hesitate to uh, adopt the Ukraine in a too easy way because they, as Julia said, they are ahead of us with their experiences. So we see now that our uh, Minister for Economy is now traveling to Kuwait and uh, to get the resources for the, for the, for the economy. Uh, we don't speak so much about this big change in ecological uh, field. We, we speak now about preventing war, being um, armed again in a completely new way, uh, spending a lot of money for that. And I think the, the Ukrainian questions are much more closer to future, not because they are survival questions, they are questions that raising uh, topics with fundamental truth. Uh, you can't rely on the Western concept. You can't rely on the Eastern concept. It's a time after the big systems. And it's a time to find new ways for independence. And uh, maybe nobody knows uh, to which end it leads. But maybe there are also different uh, concepts, not only in art, but also in economy, in how they treat their, their country, their agriculture. Um, maybe also this is sh changing right now. Julia. It will take quite a while to recover the earth in Ukraine. I was talking to the farmers, the big scale farmers who work with machines and they are very sad. They are very sad because no one, on the one hand, one hopes for Ukraine that Ukraine is the metaphor of freedom that is a model of a new society that is free from the colonial aggressions from any existing sites. But Monsanto has already destroyed, I don't know the percentage, I'm sorry, but the land is not what it was. It is not corn, kama, Russland. It's not anymore. The corn so chamber. Say, yeah, it's no longer the corn, corn chamber. chamber. And you mean the it's chemical not... company, that there's this multinational billion uh, conglomerate that has introduced, you know. Um, yes, it is in a way already colonized and it is not. It is still not. So it is colonized and it is not. So on the one hand, and you know, I talk about it while not having to experience bombings and not having to listen to the sirens, but my brother was killed in Ukraine. Still, Ukraine is not the vessel of the US, but Ukraine needs military support and it receives a lot of military support. 
And uh, one of my friends wrote to me today that she would like to punch Olaf Scholz into his face. And I just share this desperation. Seriously. Olaf Scholz is the new German chancellor. Yeah. Thank you very much for this kind clarification, Frank. And it is such a farce, you know, exporting so many weapons there on the one hand and still having clean hands by not really supporting. Germany is not interested in Ukraine winning this war. Mm. Ukraine needs more support, eventually more military support. What is more ethical nowadays? The opportunism? What do you think about, uh, I mean, I was, Judith Molina often came to our Siegel events. One of the things, when she still was in the old age home, she would come to us and we were friends. She always believed in the um, beautiful pacifist anarchist revolution. How do you make sense with your call to arms and say, I would go and it's soldier too, I would go and shoot people? You know, I'm not a military expert. I'm not calling directly to shooting people. But, but you I'm said not... you would join. You said if I would get a call, I might do it. Oh, no, know? no, no. I would not kill. Wait, wait yes. a second. Please. Okay. <laughs> I would play. I would play the Lyra to the wounded soldiers. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So um, they would hear something like this because it's the, the oldest fragment from an ancient Greek tragedy. So it is about Mariupol theater. Mm -hmm. You, as one of your art projects, you, you reconstructed an ancient Greek Lyra and you sang Delphic hymns, Apollo, Apollonian hymns to the god Apollo, and um, which was written down the second century before our time. And it was actually at the time against the barbaric Romans. And so, you know, um, so t sh tell us a little bit about, about that project of singing in dark times about the dark times, or wh what are you singing about? It's about the... A strong wave a tragic force that is coming and you cannot do anything about it. So it is, um, it's a healing melody and healing words. They are calling for process. The process of accepting abiotic times the process of entering the time and space beyond time and space, the process of understanding, as Heiner Müller said, there is no, the death is um, <laughs> the tortoise type irrtum. How can you correct it into English correctly? The death is an error. The death is an error. Ancient Greek, ancient Greek with Heiner Müller for Mariupol theater. Katolo Virome Katolo Virome Materos Pemasas Osana Bake Omegas Polvos Pos Katolo Virome ancient Greek Lyra, Frank. Mm -hmm. That's true. <laughs> but we have to concentrate on it somehow. Because I think that German 
people will never be able to recover from their guilt of having watched destruction of Mariupol and other cities. Mm -hmm. If they are honest with themselves, more has to be done. More has to be done. And also America should they do more. The American artistic community should do more. But I'm thinking about what you said. And also I think what that uh, down to earth stood for, you know, to create structures, to create networks, to build something you can rely on later. And I think this perhaps is something we have not uh, been taken care of enough. And it will not come from institutions, also perhaps not the aim and goal of institutions, but it is about survival in that sense. And we in America knew also with the whole Trump movement, and we don't know how elections will go. So this is something to learn from, I think, uh, from that and what, what, what we should be doing, because we all are asking ourselves, what can we do so, so far away? Thomas, what from your experience, and you have seen so much, uh, you have produced and created so much, you have written so much, what do you feel needs to be done now? What should artists engage in? Also theater artists. <laughs> it's hard to, to, to give any kind of advice. Um, I would like to say what I'm doing. Uh, I, I'm starting to learn to, to, to find a real relation to the Ukraine conflict. So there are many ways to find a relation that is more than watching TV. It's uh, meeting people, um, organizing something with people that uh, is a sign in the, in the public. Uh, I started to read books by Ukrainian authors. I really recommend um, um, Natasha Vodin. Uh, she, she's born in Germany, but she is a, a writer uh, from parents who, the, the father is a Russian and uh, the mother is a Ukrainian woman, both in the World War II brought as slaves for work to Germany and it's very, 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 very touching and intelligent way of rewriting the German uh, Ukrainian uh, bilateral history. Uh, you learn a lot about the Soviet Union, the Soviet human, uh, this kind of strange character that is formed by the Stalinist system. And uh, I think, uh, as Julia said, and my friend Ilya says, um, work is now to do, to give, to witness, to give, uh, document, make documentations, uh, creating archives, archives of all the cr cruel um, actions we, we see, but also archives of um, works of beauty and moments uh, who are really important to, bring to the future from this situation right now gestures that are treasures of uh, let's say real human behavior and uh, i think uh, we all want to do more than we can and uh, i'm really uh, shocked by Let's say you, you, one of your guests was Arne Vogelgesang, for example. He made mm -hmm. a theater production about um, the Third World War in the internet regarding um, fake uh, news attacks, a constant war of uh, disinformation. Um, and uh, it's a kind of war without a battle, to quote Heiner Müller's famous title from his autobiography. Uh, and, and suddenly we have the battle and we have to define what is the war about. And uh, I think artists are good advisors uh, to find deeper structures. They are closer to, uh, let's say, models of experience and narrations that are older than uh, our everyday understanding. And uh, so I, I try to start to learn from artists and I discover how much prophecies they got they, they gave already yeah. and uh, to take it serious to 
to find places for them. That would be nice to do right now. Yeah. Yeah, historically, artists have been on the right side of history, on the right side of justice, progressive justice. But and one only wishes people would have listened to them. Julia, what is so stunning with your work as an artist um, coming out of that small minority that perhaps has little answers, has answers for us that will now be so much more relevant for, 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 for the big corpus um, of, um, of nations uh, or for planet Earth. Um, on one hand, you recreated a thousand-year-old Greek lyre. We were just singing that 2,000-year-old song where one thing so little has changed, you know, against the barbaric Romans. On the other hand, you created also 3D virtual uh, uh, works. I've seen some of the videos. Uh, you uh, create imaginary um, 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 societies, imaginary republics, lessons for um, forbidden knowledge. Um, do you, how do you bridge these hybrid forms of the handmade instruments and the digital technology? Do you feel um, one now has to be, a, has to be a master of all um, these uh, uh, artistic expressions? Is it a hybrid forms that we need um, to engage with? Or um, are you just trying out um, different ways of artistic expression? Um, you know, Frank, before I even talk about uh, myself or my yeah. tribe, I would like to recommend people some uh, Ukrainian work of art, works of art. May I, mm -hmm. may yes, I please. Uh, post them in the chat? May I? Yes, sure. Um, I'm not sure if they can accept, uh, the audience cannot uh, access the chat, but put it exactly, in and we will put it onto our websites. Yeah, exactly. It's for later in that case. And apart from that, also, you know, I uh, recently to continue what Thomas was saying, um, trying to finally uh, get more engaged with Ukraine. I was always engaged with the contemporary art scene in Ukraine. And then you lose each other because you have your own world in Athens and then you realize this is happening. You know, I was so exhausted trying to um, invite people and, and, and enthusiastically drag them towards Kiev, but it was so difficult. I brought a lot of, um, a lot of, I brought um, a, a small and humble program of Autonomy Academia to Kiev to the so-called UFO. Uh, Nasty Tior, whom I've mentioned at the beginning, uh, she has been protecting with others the buildings of modernism, the buildings of Kiev modernism. I don't want to think what happens with them now. You know, one building looks like a UFO. It really has this form that is mm -hmm. sitting on a building to build this back then. And it was a synesthetic theater. So you could um, individually the videos and the sound were directed to you. You would have headphones in the chairs and you would fly to Cosmos in those chairs. And just imagine you know, this might be destroyed. This is, you know, uh, people are staying in Kiev and um, they, they are protecting this city because of this, because it's such a unique city and people are not really involved and they're not aware how beautiful and interesting it is. Also, there are theater directors and authors. Um, for example, there is Natella Vorosbit. She is one of few very brave authors. Yeah, she uh, was Milka. She was often at the Siegel Center as a guest and also on ah, our great, great, yeah, great, yeah. great, great. I feel less ridiculous right now because mm. she was already at least there. You know, I'm just yeah. wondering also, what am I doing here? No, they, they are now under bombs, they should be talking. And I would like to also encourage you to play down the video link that I've provided here. And I've also sent to the team the link that I've asked to play back. Um, the video of Nasty about the uh, her appeal to the international community. Um, it is more about them. Mm -hmm. you know? And having said this, I would like to also say something one would probably not hear unless I tell you about it. In our theater, in the city of Yoshka Ola, there is still our Mari theater. I was talking so enthusiastically mm -hmm. about this mm -hmm. automatic falling apart of the entire Russia in different, different cultures. 
But of course, uh, now the Memorial Society is closed and the only perspective people have in their mind is a dead end and dark times. And people are writing uh, letters to me saying goodbye and um, that they're very grateful to have met me in their lives and um, see you next life, so to speak. So these dark times which have arrived there also do arrive in our indigenous theater. The director of our theater is a spy and my best friend, Stefan Pekteev, is already facing difficulties. Certain plays are already not being played. And I have sent several links also to one of his works about the first acoustic film in Russia, uh, Putyovka v Zhizn. I don't even know how to translate it, but first acoustic film um, has um, it become so famous because our um, very important Mari actor, Ivan Kirla, the first indigenous actor, was playing in this film, very characteristic uh, appearance. And he has done um, a play, Stepan Pekteev. He has done a play about uh, this film. And this film is, interestingly, um, it is made on the verge between communism and Stalin epoch. And this is precisely the time of the term, the time we are entering now. The Stalinist methods, are becoming true reality and not just metaphors. And there are political repressions. And um, yes, at the same time, as you just asked me, actually it's a very long answer, but yes, the vision, the vision of um, this um, related and diverse communities is shared vision. So Stepan's other play is called Folks. And uh, participants of this play were talking in different languages, different European languages, including Mari language. And on stage, it looked very pagan. You can see it also, it is among the links. And this is a very bright and very beautiful vision of our society. And um, yeah, so the Republic of Marielle is at the end of Europe. It is part of European continent. And talking about ancient Greece, you know, for us, historically speaking, we can only offer a counter narrative to Putin's uh, historical uh, motivations beyond this rapist invasion, is that Ukraine is, of course, uh, the most eastern province of, the, of Greece. Of Greece. Mm -hmm. And there are also uh, very strong relations to Greek culture in the Ukrainian city of Hepsonathos. And there are villages that carry Greek names even now. Mm -hmm. And there is the hypothesis of a German theater director, Sebastian Kaiser, that Iphigenia was sent to Tauros, which is an, uh, actually our, on the island of Krim. So Krim doesn't mm -hmm. belong to Russia, it belongs to Greece. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some say actually, yeah, yeah. yeah, some say that actually the resistance, the Ukrainian nation is putting up, uh, you know, is connected to a democratic structure over centuries, or slightly more democratic um, than the, um, the, the czaristic uh, uh, vision of, um, of, a, of a union of Soviet states. And, um, and um, there is a, so it is actually a battle between ideologies. And the question is, what do we become as artists? Are we soldiers? Do we also have to work harder? Do we have to work stronger? I think I, for me, it's a call, you know, to be as vigilant in my work as the people who are now, you know, fighting in a sense, you know, with their guns, you know, aggressor, the invasion, this illegal invasion against Geneva Convention, against the international law. It's a lawless uh, um, event what we are witnessing. Big question, of course, is, and we had it a little bit on a very small scale in New York after Corona, will it be a renaissance? or a revolution, a renaissance is, should we go back to how it was, New York will flourish again, or will something radically change? And I think this is the moment, uh, you know, where we are in, and of course we all hope it is a moment of radical change and that uh, this fight that is uh, happening perhaps, you know, will and I'll usher in um, a, a new awareness. We are so far away here in America. It's a very big island. Nothing is changing. Nothing of our lives. We do not encounter like Thomas 
uh, in the train stations, you know, in the trains, uh, the refugees on the street. All of my friends in Berlin have refugees, a lot of them in their homes. Um, so I think it is important that also America, you know, understands um, what it is um, at stake. That this is about a planetary, you use that word also, a planetary crisis, and not just looking what are the interests of a national state like uh, Germany, France, or or, um, or, or, or America, but um, I, uh, I uh, really uh, am inspired by you that you do say artists have a place in this fight, right? That's what you are saying to us? Yes, I think that not only artists, artists is also a very narrow identity nowadays. Nowadays is just about here and now. You are Frank, uh, you are Thomas, I'm Julia, and let's think what can we do to just tonight to really support uh, the self-organized infrastructures in Kiev. What are the concrete possibilities to involve people, invite them, to give talks, to give lectures, to show screenings, to show their videos, to really listen to what they um, were saying and what they would like to also um, to work on together with us. Rather, I see um, institutions from Europe that patronize over Ukrainian artists and feel very good when they exhibit their sculptures and uh, discuss some concrete structures and metal structures. You know, people are dying right now. So what can yeah. you, Frank, Thomas and me, what can we do now, you know, because existing structures, you know, I've been sending emails to my friends in existing German institutions, and they said that they could not show the videos by my friends from Ukraine because they have so many exhibitions planned due to Corona that they could not um, put it in their program right now. Hmm. This is, this was a call for solidarity, and uh, yeah. it is very telling. It was actually rather an invitation to, to show a video somewhere in the entrance, maybe, a call for solidarity. What mm -hmm. is this? And you don't need to be an institutional director or non-institutional director or uh, artist or, or a theater worker. You don't need to be, you don't need this all. There is a truth speaking for you and you have to act now. That's all. And I don't even know why I have to be invited to such a conversation because this is so obvious. Everybody can say it now. And this is the time that has arrived in our this huge planetary crisis. And it's a war over resources. And there are no dictators, bad and good guys. It's all of us. We are all Putin. It's all of our fault. We all can do something and we cannot wait for anything. So you can see here in this chat room PayPal account. Mm -hmm. <laughs> This is what you can do right now mm. against uh, necropolitics of um, the Tsar. Mm -hmm. And maybe we can organize, I can speak with HowlRound that we organize a screening, you know, of, uh, um, um, of, of works if we get some help with links and what to do. Um, so um, it, it is Ukraine is on people's mind and it is um, 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 of importance. Thomas, um, we, we have, you know, coming also closer to the end of our talk, what, what else is on your mind when you think about this planet, this world, um, instead of the big hope in a way that a down to earth festival, you know, will teach us a more gentle uh, a way of dealing with our environment, with the, uh, the tile name in the Landschaft, your landscape, you know, in we, which we participate in and respect instead of uh, destroying it or so what comes to your mind in, 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 this, in, in, in this moment for this planetary thinking you are involved in? I think uh, we don't have to be naive if we speak. Uh, if, we, if we did a project like Down to Earth, basically the starting point was the idea to make a camp, to bring communities together who never are in the same frame in uh, institutional um, events uh, usually and uh, to to open these borders to open 
the understanding of, um, let's say, the work that institutions has to do. We have to change this uh, because the work is not, uh, it's not only the operation system, uh, the betrieb system, it's also uh, the goal of our work. The goal of our work, uh, I think, should be more um, related to understanding what is good life and good life uh, in, in, in this uh, older sense of what takes, uh, what, what, what is good for us as, as an experience and relation to the world and other people. So this is the main question. And uh, I understand uh, the urgent call from Julia because now maybe the, the much more, the biggest pressure is to help people to survive, to defend themselves. At the same time, I think uh, we have to uh, let all these feelings of guilt behind us to become really empathic um, and to, uh, to, open, to open our routine for inventions of uh, inventions of uh, that are interventions in the way how we produce how we uh, build networks for me in, in the moment uh, I'm searching for spaces I'm searching for let's say I would love to build an alternative society on a very small venue in which we can have for a certain amount of days for a very short time uh, an example for good life, for good relation to environment, to other people, and to give an example that it's possible. And uh, so it's more than consuming, I think, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. Going out of this old tradition of consuming something. Uh, and I, 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 I'm not a fan of... Uh, co-producing. I don't want to go in a theater to be an, a part of something. Uh, but I think uh, that there are ways to organize a more holistic experience of uh, what art means. And that is, let's say, in the center is the artwork, but the artwork could be also uh, a central, uh, like the Maidan. The Maidan was an open space and, and a square that uh, was at the same time a front line and brought so many people together, uh, workers, uh, artists, uh, people from the army, neighbors. Uh, but uh, I think this would be a very good work to start to build up this kind of squares uh, in our rich society to bring uh, to bring this kind of energies together and to to check what is really good for us. And I, I, I love, of course, all the artists who make great performances and writing good books. That's not old fashioned. Uh, but I think the way how we write books and how we do performances is changing. And uh, also the way how we running our institutions is changing and we should not go back uh, because uh, there's infl um, inflation, infl uh, inflation, inflation. There is uh, a lack of money uh, arising right now and there will be a change, but uh, not from the idealistic point of uh, view. And uh, we have to take that as a chance, I think. This this comes to us if we want it or not. Mm -hmm. Julia, some, some more thoughts? Um... Yes, in Greece, um, it has already come some time ago. And around 2012, there were 33 alternative currencies used in this country. This country is uh, an enlightened, enlightened society. This country always also had Nazis. What did they do? They have protected themselves from those Nazis by establishing Syriza. 
we don't want to get into that discussion, but it's just an example of certain things that eventually can happen. And they do happen there. And there are worlds there beyond the existing so-called democratic governmental structures that are those worlds. Those worlds that are very close to what Thomas has just described as good light. And in Greece, we experiment on different um, notions of good life with their forms of knowledge and uh, the practices that are related to forms of knowledge um, of living are indeed intersectional. So it is theater with therapeutical techniques, with political theory and with performing arts. Um, yes, so I do experience what uh, Thomas just said and we also do experience this in the Mari El forest. It's called Yumogai Li, which means living like the gods. Mm -hmm. Our highest goddess is called Mother of the Sun. It's very different to the patriarchic white heterosexual man who is now in his last agonic state. Yeah, yeah that's, uh, that is, uh, it, what, both of you, what you say, it is so significant and it's so important. And I think hopefully we will write this down or have a transcription. I mean, it is really, um, um, especially also for us here in New York, so far removed, we have most of the energy now goes, can we get restarted again? Can Be Brooklyn Academy of Music start again? And here Art Center and St. Anne's and we are busy. People, Broadway wants to bring Michael Jackson video back, but you know, there is a new planetary situation and next to bringing all this back, we have to develop new artistic practices mm. that are connected we to our that. lives and we have to live it. And it's something that is not, I think, uh, understood enough. And we need to create this for the future because as we see with Ukraine, we do not know what is coming. Mm. In New York, people are organizing assemblies about Ukraine also. Yeah. So yeah. this, uh, this is also a hope that we can eventually rely on already on our thin and fine net that yeah. has been created yeah. during the occupied time. That is true. And I hope there will be much more. I hope maybe at the very end, you can sing us your song again, if that's okay for you. <laughs> and uh, to say, no. you know, the, 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 this, this beautiful Apollonian song of ancient Greek okay. from two centuries before uh, our time and against the barbaric uh, intrusions. <laughs> uh, will you do that for us? Against the empire. Yes, and I'm, yeah. And then I would like you know to say thank you for both of you uh, for joining, uh, Thomas, for uh, uh, coming in. I apologize again for the summertime uh, mix-up. We put you a bit under stress. Uh, we, um, at the five o'clock and six o'clock. Um, but I think this was a very significant and very important discussion. We need to hear from Ukraine, but also from Germany, Belarus. We're going to have the freedom seat of Belarus with us. Uh, Natalia Kaliada, who also sees her work as a diplomatic mission in life. Um, she's just, just in Washington speaking to lawmakers, you know, to hear from her what she thinks and what this uh, conflict is about. And I want to thank HowlRound for hosting us, also encouraging us, you know, to start these um, talks um, again. So it's very, very important. And we also now feel it is a time that we put into practice. Also, our center, we will start again. Our university is still closed. There are no public programs possible, but I will go back in the office this week and we will see how we can react also to that great down to earth program with things in the park to create networks. And maybe one day, um, Julia, you can also come and uh, create work and art here and share what you have to say, and what is really, really important from that small indigenous community with that had perhaps answers over thousands of years, and it's a faint voice and we didn't listen to it and the world would be a better place if everyone would. So thank you, thanks for HowlRound um, for having us, Tanvi and Andy for uh, creating this. And um, again, um, if that's a, a thinkable, Julia, it was such a, a beautiful, also ancient, uh, uh, mythical song for the people in Maripol, people who might be get killed 
at the moment we speak here with some artists who also, as we heard from a talk, we did a talk on Friday, theater companies, actors are leaving rehearsals to join the army. And Thank they you, don't Frank, know if for they your... will be back. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you, Frank. You do really a very important, wonderful work. Well, it means, means a lot if you say that because, because I know you mean it. Thank you, Thomas. <laughs> Indeed, dear Frank, thank you for having become the ally of the Mari tribe in the US. Okay. And uh, I would like to call all my ancestors and uh, all my ancestors and also I mm -hmm. would like to honor those who were shot on the Maidan Square. I somehow spontaneously started talking about them at the mm -hmm. very beginning. And we will because maybe, we are creating a new journal, also an academic journal. It's going to be called Indigenous Stages. It will be the first one worldwide dedicated to indigenous art, about artists, artists' work, but also the re theoretic reflections about it. It does not uh, exist yet. Opala Nieted, Ryan Pierce, one of our students, and I, we are creating it. So we hope that we can um, have you represented in there. Something exciting happened today. There was a, a document, I've seen it very briefly. It was posted by an initiative of trans localities of feminist movement. And uh, it is also including different um, claims of independence within indigenous communities of Russia. So, so I will be very, very happy to collect some Good. material and contribute. And now, again, again, let's mourn, let's mourn the victims once again. And Listen to this healing sound of the ancient Greek Lyra. I will play a different excerpt from a different hymn. It's more revolutionary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all very, very much. And I hope to welcome both of you soon or one day here in New York or to see you in, in Berlin or Athens. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Julia. You, thank you, Thomas. Thank, thank you, you, everybody, thank you, for listening. Thank you, the Seagull Center. Yeah, thanks to the listeners who take time out of their lives to join us and also put into action uh, what we heard about. Thank Please you. Please revisit this YouTube documentation for all the links to this wonderful person's initiatives and to their works. Okay, we will post it on the website and also on the HowlRound site. I hope that's possible. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you, Frank. Thank you, Julia.